14 days, I'm going to be traveling around the country of Turkey. It's my first time visiting. And with so much to do, I've decided to book the entire trip using the company Intrepid Travel. Led by our group leader, Or. Welcome to my beautiful country. He'll be taking us around the major cities, towns, and highlight attractions. <laughs> going in depth into Turkey's history and culture. This walkway is known as processional way. Welcome to Esophis. Almost doesn't look real. Like Almost painted. like a painting. <laughs> Give me a bottle of wine. I can just enjoy that wine and watch this building for hours. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Are the first Turkic kingdom in Asia Minor. We're gonna go check out the Sufi ceremony of the whirling dervish. The idea here is very deep, very spiritual, and very mystical. That wasn't a show, that was a ceremony. There's a spa, beautiful spas with thermal pools and all these. <laughs> it's truly one of the most unique places I've ever seen in my entire life. Turkish pancakes for us planned? Yeah, we just got Gözleme. Gözleme. Welcome to the beautiful city of Kaz. For the next two days, we're gonna be on the Mediterranean in that boat. This is unbelievable. Another stunning viewpoint. This is insane. Nature is shaping this area in all different shapes. The things that I've been seeing here in Turkey are mind-blowing. Join me in seeing some of the world's most exotic sites and locations through various destinations for one grand adventure. Whoa, no Thank way! You. Exploring the best of Turkey. Nice to meet you. There's Prophet Mohammed's beard. These are from Roman period. Let's go to the cold water. So, Turkey, this is the place I've been wanting to go to for years. And in fact, I booked this exact trip last year. And three days after booking it, it was canceled. Because, um, well, we all know that story. Thankfully, Intrepid Travel did issue me a full refund. And technically, I could have still gone to Turkey and done the trip on my own, as the country was open. It was just the tours that were shut down. But I had my mind set on using Intrepid Travel for a couple of reasons. One being that my first time using them was on my trip to Morocco, and I had the best time probably one of the best trips i've ever done in my life secondly i like their website all the information you would ever need to prepare yourself for a trip is right there in full detail and thirdly they just have really good itineraries all the highlights you'd want to see are already included which alleviates a lot of the headache of having to plan all of that yourself so basically your only responsibility is to show up and have a good time another reason is that Sometimes you just want to make new friends. Most times I'm traveling on my own and I'm perfectly comfortable doing that. But, you know, it's nice to share these experiences with other people. Lastly, there is one more thing I feel I need to mention and that is that recently, and recently meaning just a few days ago, this being the month of August, Turkey was struck by massive forest fires. And if this issue continues, I'm not sure if Intrepid Travel will have to cancel or if they'll alternate the itinerary to avoid any areas that were affected. As of now, I haven't heard anything from them yet. So unless they contact me within the next couple of days, which is when I'm leaving, I'm assuming it's still on. And if so, I'll be seeing you in Turkey. My journey begins in New York with a layover in Athens and a final stop in Istanbul city. We have made it to Istanbul. Now I just need to get a taxi to get me to the hotel. Thank you. So I just made it to the hotel. My plane landed at three o'clock, which means that, <laughs> that I already missed a one o'clock orientation meeting, which is very disappointing because this is where you get to sit down with your tour group leader. This is Ur, an Intrepid tour guide. I've been working with Intrepid since 2005, and welcome to my beautiful country. Let's rock it. Yeah. Get to hear a little bit about his experience, and he'll tell you a little bit about what to expect on this trip. And uh, you also get to introduce yourself to the group that you're gonna be spending the next couple of weeks with. And, you know, we're all here for a good time, but for me, that also includes filming, and that's something that I always have to present to the, to the group because 
not everyone's here to be on camera. So it's always good to kind of like throw that out there and if someone is uncomfortable with cameras around them, then you have to figure out a way to work around it. But anyway, the group leader is going to be coming back here to meet up with me at the hotel because right now they're currently doing a walking tour of Istanbul city. So I'll be catching up with them. That evening, I joined two other members, Ricky and Eunice, to meet with our group leader or for dinner and get acquainted before starting our first day of the adventure tomorrow. Wow. All right, good morning. So last night we got to do uh, dinner with the group. It's a really small group. It's only five of us in total out of a 16 limit capacity, which goes to show you, you know, the effects of the pandemic. But uh, yeah, um, we came back to the hotel after dinner and uh, um, went to bed really early and did not sleep very well. Not that I was having an issue sleeping, I was doing just fine. But at 5, 5 a.m., I was woken up by the call to prayer. <laughs> And they got the call to prayer happening outside. Let's check it out. And haven't been able to sleep properly since then. It is 8.30 right now and I'm gonna be heading downstairs to the lobby to meet with the group because now we're gonna be heading to the city of Bursa. And I'm uh, tired but excited because now we're gonna get this first leg of this adventure started. So let's get going. All in between. There is this land, I will be calling it Anatolia or Asia Minor. Okay, so more than 97% of Turkey is in Asia. This part is Europe. Our drive to Bursa was two and a half hours, with our first stop in town being checking out the Ulu Mosque. Is that how we cross streets here? You just, you just go for Still it. don't think that they will stop. Let me do it first, okay? <laughs> I'll sacrifice myself. <laughs> your feet has to be clean, your wrists, foreheads, behind the ears. Then they are ready and clean for praying and then they can go into the mosque. The building is from 1399, at the end of 14th century. The Ottomans, they started to become a power in 1300 AD. They are pre-Ottomans, they are Turkic too, and they are known as Seljuks. Seljuks entered into Asia Minor in the beginning of 1000 AD, Seljuks are the first Turkic kingdom in Asia Minor. You see the line and use right? It says Allah. You see Muslim practicing Muslim people, they go to Mecca. Every single Muslim, when they pray, they always face this way. We have made it to the wonderful city of Bursa. Just walking around the neighborhood. We checked out the local mosque, the market, had some lunch, and now we're gonna walk to our hotel. But the weather's beautiful and the city's really nice. We just checked into our hotel, which is right across the street from the mosque that we just visited, which now they're actually doing the call to prayer. If you can hear that in the background. And uh, we have the afternoon to ourselves, but later on today, we're gonna go check out the Sufi ceremony of the whirling dervish. That was very hard to say. But it's a traditional ceremony, and uh, yeah, can't wait to check that out later on today. <laughs> we were having such a great evening, and I was so caught up admiring the atmosphere, and, and then out of nowhere, it just caught me by surprise. Why I just brought you here a little bit earlier because I want to give you information about these whirling dervishes. Otherwise, there are going to be some guys whirling around themselves. <laughs> That's it. But the idea here is very deep, very spiritual, and very mystical. These guys are Sufists. Sufism, okay. Mm -hmm. Sufism is only based on being tolerant, finding the divine love, being in unity with whole universe and they're gonna come on the stage once they start whirling they are going to raise their hands their right hand will be looking up to the sky left hand will be looking down they are in charge with getting a divine love from sky and reflected on earth our soul this ritual's name is Sema 
Sema means sky in ancient Turkish. And everything spins in sky. Planets and all this stuff, okay. Just don't forget these guys will be whirling for a couple of minutes. Just think about whirling around yourself for 20 seconds. Not even maybe it's five, six, seven, seven uh, seconds <laughs> enough <laughs> to make it dizzy. <laughs> you can follow my friends. Ne kadar sürüyor abi? Muhafaza eylesin. Ağabeyler afatından, sel afatından, gök afatından, her türlü afattan Ümmet-i Muhammed'i muhafaza eylesin. Amin. What's important to realize about tonight is that that wasn't a show. That was a ceremony. We were given the privilege of essentially watching them meditate as the Sufist read a combination of passages from the Quran as well as a very influential philosopher named Mevlana Jaladin Rami. And they did that for an hour, which is incredibly difficult. Okay, the night is over. That was something very special, very unique. Especially for my birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> I'm glad if you liked it. Yeah, I did. Let's take this one. Alright, what a night. And today our target is right here. Alright. We're going to drive to the west a little bit, then we're going to drive down to the south to a town called Seljuk. So we have made it to the city of Seljuk and this has much more of a traditional feel to it. So I'm looking forward to exploring this area more. Well let's check into our hotel first. Once we settled in, we visited the nearby mosque, which was literally just a few steps away. You know, in Turkey, there are some villages, especially in southeastern Turkey, in Antioch, for example. You can see an Orthodox church, a Catholic church, a mosque, a synagogue, side by side. And these people, they all live together. And there's no issue, yeah. If you don't mind, let me take you to the courtyard of the mosque. Shortly, I'll explain you about the mosque. And then we're gonna go inside the mosque, okay? Perfect. This one, as I told you, it's not an Ottoman. It's a pre-Ottoman mosque, follows from Selçuk, which was the name of the town, called Selçuk. This must be priests and all this, but this one is most probably a Sufis guy. This is a typical Selçuk mosque. In Turkey, there are lots of Selçuk mosques. Selçuk mosques they are from 11th century, 12th century, and 13th century AD. That's the end of the Selçuk period in today's Turkey, okay? They built this mosque in the name of Isa Bey Elther, and the mosque's name is Isa Bey Mosque. All right. As I told you, Isa means Jesus at the same time. That column is an original Roman column from 1st or 2nd century AD. You see triangular shapes in every single corner uh, in the Ottoman and Selçuk mosques. In, in the art of history, those triangles are known as typical Turkish triangle. So those last ones are from the Ottoman era, most probably. glad I did this trip with a group, especially with someone like Moore, because he has so much information and knowledge of the history and culture that there's no way I would know any of this stuff coming here. I, I would just be looking at things and not have a clue as to what I'm looking at, so really beneficial to have someone like him with us on this trip. A short distance away was one of the ancient world's seven wonders, the Temple of Artemis. This is the base of the temple over 500 meters and it did have more than 300 columns the oldest oldest one is dating back to 1200 bc lots of earthquakes just hit the area we will see only one column with a stark nest at the top romans instead of making new columns they shipped the columns back to constantinopolis 
and use them with their structuring because the Romans didn't say oh one day tourists might come and they might want to see it and so they recycled it in Turkey today most of the columns are in Istanbul the town of Şirince was our last stop and after a long day of exploring a treat was a much needed reward Turkish ice cream is infamous for their vendors wearing costumes from the Kahamambaras region from which its ice cream originates, but also for their master trickery. Okay, vanilla, only vanilla. So fast. You're not quick enough, are you? I know. I'm too amazing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want. This way is the wine. <laughs> right. You want to try some? Thank God we have a driver. We have a driver. <laughs> Cheers to the driver. <laughs> I don't drink wine, yeah, I'm gonna cheat just so I can be in my own video. Cheers! 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 Cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh, no me quite la máscara. It's just water, I don't drink wine. <laughs> the next morning, we were up bright and early to visit the ancient Roman city of Esophis. Wow, what a great way to start the morning. This is gonna be awesome. Built in the 10th century BC, the ancient settlement of Esophis lies on the coast of Seljuk. Over 2,000 years ago, this Greco-Roman city was once the capital of Roman Asia Minor. At over 1,000 acres, it was a flourishing city, and despite it being abandoned since the 15th century, its remarkably preserved state gives you a clear look at what civilization was like in that era. There's a lot of tourists here this morning, but if you just walk a little bit further, you can beat most of the crowd and get the shots that you need. There used to be an arch on it, a big, beautiful marble arch. And this road, this walkway is known as processional way. This used to be the town square here. See the town square? Dedicated to the Emperor Domitian. And it would open down to a street called Kureits Street. It's the most important street in Ephesus site. This is Asclepios, and he is the god of healing in the Roman period. Uh, in a place called Pergamon, these guys, they used to build some temples dedicated to Asclepios, called Asclepion, which was an hospital. Lady there, that's the Nike swoosh, that's where they inspired. The details that's left over is so fascinating to me. I mean, it's all devastated, but a lot of it's still intact. 75% of the building is original. It's the Celsus Library. Celsus was the governor of this area. His sons decided to build this amazing, beautiful looking library. This library was the third largest library in the ancient world. Almost doesn't look real, like almost painted, yeah. like a painting. <laughs> you know, I always say, give me a bottle of wine. I can just enjoy that wine and watch this building for hours. Every turn there's something impressive. As I said, you can easily get lost over here because I mean, look at all of this. There's just enough, not enough time. I mean, we've been here for two hours and there's still way, way more to see. Really enjoy this. Esophis has probably been the best part of this trip so far. And it gets me really excited because I feel like now the adventure part of this trip is really, really starting. Esophis, impressed. Afterwards, Ur took us to a nearby restaurant to try a local specialty. And you said we have uh, this is Turkish pancakes for us planned? Yeah, which is called gözleme. Gözleme. Okay, I'm back at the hotel and it is only 3 o'clock, but it feels like it's been such a long day that I, I feel like I need a rest, but there's so much history in this area. There's so many options. Like right around the corner from the hotel is the Church of St. John's, where he actually grew up in this area and supposedly, supposedly met the Virgin Mary here and took her up to the hill where she spent her last remaining days. I learned of this from Soliman, a local who ran the hotel across from ours and invited me over for a view of the town. Wow, look at this. this. I think this is, come here. 
Hi guys, I'm Suleiman from Turkey. This is Church of St. John. This is the John that before Jesus passed away and he said this John look after my mother, take care of my mother. This is the, uh, his church, Church of St. John's Basilica. Justin and his wife Deodora, they on the 4th century, they built this church for the St. John. The house of Virgin Mary, she lives right on top there. And the funny thing is that I'm thinking whether I should just sit by the poolside and do nothing for the rest of the day or just make the effort to go to St. John's. With Soliman's passionate description, it didn't take much convincing. Freshened up a bit and realized that how could I not check out this site? I mean, it's, it's our last day here and I would have massive amounts of FOMO if I didn't do it. I mean, how could you not check out such a monumental location? Beautiful. In the mountain where uh, oh, uh, Mary's house, Mary was uh, living uh, her yeah. last years. How was it? Great, yeah. I really wish I did my research before coming here, but had to rush for the closed. And it doesn't matter which way you go, you're gonna find something cool, but I don't really know what I'm looking at, just kind of randomly exploring. Okay, apparently, this is the church area. I don't know. We'll, we'll just enjoy the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess the mosaics gave it away. You see the castle up ahead? Let's go check that out. This looks like a reconstruction of what it may have looked like. Well, looks like the castle's closed. Too bad. Well, it was still a good day. I'm still happy about coming here and exploring. Glad I didn't miss out on this. At the end of the day, I still got to enjoy my time by the pool. Good morning. Just enjoying the last view here in uh, Seljuk. Wish I could spend more time here, but unfortunately uh, we have to move on. And that is three hours east to Pumakali, which translates to Cotton Castle. And it's supposed to be one of the more picturesque areas of uh, Turkey. So yeah, looking forward to that. This is the main street, okay. It follows all the way down. Do you see the cypress trees far away? There's a spa, beautiful spas with thermal pools and all these. Well, if you look around you, we are in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Why did they build it here? Except spas. You need water, you need food. All those fields you just see down there below, mm -hmm. most of them are cotton fields. We're closely approaching the hot thermal pools, and I gotta tell you, this is probably one of the most anticipated moments of this trip so far. Oh, it's so warm. Careful, careful. <laughs> I should probably focus on my steps and not be holding a camera, because this is very slippery. All right, I'm going in. It's like no bath water. I joined this gentleman. How are you, sir? Woo. Feels good. Yes, yes. Yeah, right? Body temperature. I feel like a swimsuit model. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't even look real. It, it looks like a glacier, but this is actually calcium buildup on uh, natural limestone. And because this place is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, you're not allowed to walk with shoes on. You have to walk completely barefoot to preserve this pristine, beautiful place. It's truly one of the most unique places I've ever seen in my entire life. All right, I'm here with Muruvet. She's from Turkey. Hey. Say hello. Hello. She's gonna help me take some photos because <laughs> now we've beaten some of the traffic. Ha, 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 ha.
sunset, golden hour, and this has been the end of a beautiful, beautiful day. We were now headed to the small town of Kayakoi. We have two days here, so once we checked into our hotel, we started the afternoon relaxing at the beach. Let's go to the cold water. <laughs> oh, it feels great. The first time this beach water is not cold. My time in the water was short. The salt levels are so high that... Ah, it burned. The following day, we hiked to the hillside remains of a once Greek village. The ghost town makes up around 500 homes, which now serves as a museum and historical monument. When you look at the houses, you realize that the roofs are gone and they, they have no window frames, see, wooden bits. Because as I told you, this became an open air museum after the 1960s. Before that, people were able to go in and take the wood for burning, for cooking, for burning and all this. But since 60s, this is a protected site. Romans passed here, they established a big empire. The Ottomans pass through here. This thing is going back to Byzantine Ottoman thing. Remember, I told you that the Ottoman structures, they look like the ancient Greek Orthodox churches. Their style, architectural style, is very Roman, actually, okay? So these cultures, they affected each other. We got an impression how they live in. So we are now exploring the abandoned remains of what once used to be an old Greek village. Many years ago, Greeks and Turks used to live amongst each other very peacefully before 1923, which is when Turkey became an independent country. A few years before that, religion and politics got in the way, causing a conflict between the two nationalities. And so what they agreed upon was a national exchange. So all the Greeks that were living in Turkey now had to move back to Greece. And all the Turks living in Greece had to return back to Turkey. And that all happened supposedly within a span of one year. And for today's activity, we got paragliding. Antonio. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, fly together. This is Shafat. Shafat. We enjoyed the view from the beach yesterday, but now we get to see the beach from on top. I don't know if the GoPro's gonna pick this up, but there are literally maybe 50 of them that I can see. Just falling from the sky. So I wasn't planning to do this again, but when their entire group said that they wanted to do it, I said, why not? It's all about camaraderie, right? I think it's gonna be a slightly different experience because when I did it, it was just me and the guide and maybe two other people in the sky. But I mean, if you look around you, we have 100 people here, so it's gonna be quite the visual. Okay, you stand up, go, 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 go. Run, 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 run. Woo! Hey! <laughs> this is absolutely peaceful. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Woo! That was awesome. Okay, man. you like it? Yeah, I love it, man. That was awesome. Thank you, Trevet. You are welcome. Once again, paragliding did not disappoint. It's such a thrill when you're up there. And I thought we were all going to jump together as a group, see each other as we were passing by. We just kind of like wave. Hello! <laughs> Everyone's just kind of scattered. I'm just happy that they had a good time because they were all kind of nervous about it. Los viejitos la están haciendo! And I had a good time. Yeah, it was a good experience. It was an adventure-filled day, topped by a Turkish barbecue dinner, compliments of the owner. We had now made our way two hours to the small fishing town of Kash. This is the uh, Sleeping Devil guys, and the Kash people, they know it very well. Up there at the top of the hill, you can see the head of it with the eye, his shoulder, his hand, and his body goes just like that. 
They are waiting for the devil to wake up. <laughs> and it's just like an upside down ship uh, symbolizes a dead soldier. That is the hugest tortoise I've ever seen. Welcome to the beautiful city of Kaz. This is going to be one of the more prominent attractions on this adventure because for the next two days, we're going to be on the Mediterranean in that boat. We met our gracious host, Captain Sadiq and his wife Imran, and shortly after began sailing off into the Mediterranean. The morning of our coastal cruise was spent relaxing on this traditional gullet and enjoying a quick swim in the bluest water before being treated to a homemade meal. Let me show you to my quarters. I've always wanted to say that. So here's my room. Right? Pretty cozy. And every room has its own bathroom. We then made our way sailing to a neighboring island to see the sunken remains of a Roman village. Simena was the uh, name of this fishing area, the island people. As I mentioned, in 300 BC, a huge earthquake hit this area. Most probably the magnitude was over 8, and because of this uh, earthquake, the city submerged, sank into the water 3 to 3.5 three meters. That rectangular shape, this line here, was the wall of the harbor. These are from Roman period, they are typical ah. Roman. That's the roof of a house. So they were terraced houses. So this is where we're docking for tonight. All these boats here are just day trip boats, so they won't get to stay. So we'll have all of this to ourselves. It's gonna be pretty sweet, especially when we get to sleep on top of the ship. Once we docked, we were paid a visit by a merchant whose striking resemblance turned out to be Captain Sadiq's sister. If you burn this in your house, oh, it kills, yes, yes, kills yes, bacteria. This is my first time ever getting to spend the night on a boat and it's absolutely perfect. Coming here is a dream come true. I can't get over how happy I am right now. Oh, oh, sexy! Sadiq with the fish! Oh, Captain C! Sexy! Dump, dump, dump! Take the head out and suck the head. Yeah. Like this, look. Oh, it's kissing a fish. Well, good morning, everyone. First night sleeping on a boat, I gotta admit, it was a little bit rough. Um, it was hot in here, but uh, I'm not gonna let that take away from the overall experience because this was amazing. The other thing is that I think that the microphone on my camera is busted. I was checking the footage from last night and a lot of the audio is damaged. But if I can't get this thing to work, I'm either gonna have to use my iPhone, which I'm using right now for the rest of the trip, or I guess take this off and use the external mic that's on this camera, which is not going to be the best quality, but we'll make it work somehow. Anyway, time for breakfast and then back to land. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it should have been, yeah. <laughs> Good morning, it's 9 a.m. and uh, we're checking out of this hotel, which by the way, we stayed at this hotel yesterday after we completed our boat cruise. Really nice, cozy place. And uh, so we're checking out of here because now we have a three hour drive to the city of Antalya.
little bunk balconies are dating back to 1800s and in the Ottoman architecture they are known as Jumba. We explored Antalya starting with Hadrian's Gate built in 130 AD for the Roman Emperor Hadrian. It's the last remaining entrance of the city walls with remnants of chariot tracks of old. But just like a real it would fit. Your chariot would fit. Uh, have a look at this little detail. There's a little marble plot stuck on the face, facade. Seljuks and Ottomans, they use these plots with the Arabic writings on it and they are verses from Quran to protect the building. Do you remember the name of this town anybody? Antalya. What is this? Antalya. Right? His name is Atalos. He found the city and the city was known as the city of Atalos, Atalia. We are seeing the first king of this area. He is Atalos II. tour through the old town of Antalya was my personal favorite right, good timing. Look at the and the waterfront view was the perfect conclusion before heading into Konya the next morning. One of my main concerns when coming to Turkey was if we were going to see any of the devastation from the recent forest fires. This was just a matter of a few weeks ago and I thought that if they didn't get it under control that perhaps this trip would be cancelled again or perhaps Intrepid would find a way to kind of reroute our itinerary. But coming into Konya we did get to see a lot of the damage that was done. What's interesting is seeing on the highway like every 35 kilometers bottled water or buckets of water as preventative measures and although they did get it under control it's going to take years before it's restored. They're even thinking about changing the plantation which are more durable to fly. We are now in the city of Konya and we got to explore this afternoon and to be honest with you the city itself is not too impressive but one of the cool things that we did get to do is go to the tomb of Mevlana Jaladin Rami. Bear with me it's really hard to pronounce but we got to see his actual tomb. This is the mosque uh, where he's buried and he was a very famous philosopher and poet. So these are important relatives or his followers. That's why we see the coffins. People usually ask me, they say, who are in the coffins? Who are in the coffins? Nobody in the coffins. Because as I told you again, the Muslim burials is not with the coffin. Take people out on right shoulder facing Mecca. These are the original fascicules, let's say of the Mesnevi and Divani Kebi. Inside that mother of pearl box, mm -hmm. there is Prophet Muhammad's beard. And the ritual of the rolling dervish that we got to see earlier is actually a ritual in dedication to him after his death, which I thought was really cool. Then we went to a park and saw the most adorable kids. Hey there. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And really shocking to see that they were not scared of a camera. They were very comfortable around the camera. <laughs> and then Anise, one of the members of the group, decided that we should buy some candies and distribute it to the park. That was pretty much the highlight of the day. Just to see some smiles for the day was really, really nice. Oh, it's bit there. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> and then we ended the day having dinner at this beautiful restaurant overlooking the two mosques in the center of the city. And that's it. We're only here for one day. We're off to Cappadocia and that is the last stop on this journey. And I am beginning to get that sad feeling in the pit of my stomach because <laughs> it's realizing that it's all coming to an end and it makes me sad because I Turkey is a wonderful place and I've been having such a good time here. But you know, all good things come to an end eventually. But yeah, that's it. So got to get ready because tomorrow we head to Cappadocia. We'll be making three major stops along the way to Goreme. Now we are driving over the actual original signal. In the 1100s, caravanserai like Sultan Han were built along the Silk Road, providing tradesmen safe resting places and protection from bandits at night. By the 1500s, it started losing its importance due to the Spanish and Portuguese building bigger ships, allowing for larger and faster transit. These honeycomb structures are created from volcanic rock, made into cave dwellings known as fairy chimneys and castles. This is unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this in my life. And how many years did it take to do this? I mean, this is more of like a stopover for photos before we get into Cappadocia, but I really wish 
Really wish we had more time here because this place is absolutely stunning. Another stunning viewpoint. We only get 20 minutes, but all the promises that we're going to see a lot more of this. This is insane. After check-in, we all went for a hike at Love Valley. These natural structures are named that due to their phallic-like representation. Nature is shaping this area in all different shapes. Another wedding shoot. I guess that's why it's called the Valley of Love. Thank you. Take care. Yet another fantastic afternoon. The things that I've been seeing here in Turkey are mind blowing. Just sad that it's all coming to an end pretty soon. It's super early morning. I woke up at 5.30 in the morning to do one last final epic activity as I always do, ending every trip. Today, I'm doing probably what is the number one rated thing to do in Cappadocia, and that is the hot air balloon. And it's so funny because my first intrepid trip in Morocco ended the same exact way. But I think this is gonna be a little bit different because instead of seeing a few balloons in the sky, we're gonna probably see hundreds. So, pretty exciting. Let's get this adventure started. Hey. Joining me from my group would be Eunice. Ooh, and we're taking off. Hi. Good morning once again. Good morning. Oh, so nice. Did you say we're gonna land on the trailer? On the trailer. That is I'll try at least. Yes, I gotta see. Is that the rescue team? Big finale. He lands it right on top of that truck. Three. Two. One and a half. One. Oh, no Thank way! You. Wow! Nicely done. Nicely done. That was impressive. We will <laughs> fix a table and celebrate with champagne for oh, safe landing. Bravo! Nice. Oh. Cheers. <laughs> Not for me, but. That was amazing. I didn't think I was gonna get as buzzed the second time around, but even more so. I mean, the views were just astonishing. What a great way to end this trip. We're done and it's only 7.02. I think I need a nap. <laughs> Actually, the adventure wasn't quite over just yet as we still had to fly back to Istanbul for one last day of the trip. Once we landed, we said our final goodbyes to Or. And because I didn't get to see much of Istanbul, I, along with the group, decided to do a belly dancing boat cruise around the city. At perfect timing, we got the call to prayer right here at the mosque. We began our night
I cruised down the river, I got to admire the illuminated mosques, city lights, and Faith Sultan Mehmet Bridge before being entertained with dance, whatever this is. And the main attraction of belly dancing. Afterwards, we danced, we laughed, and it was the absolute best end to the night and a memorable conclusion to this adventure. <laughs> Turkey is a wonderful country filled with some of the most genuine, welcoming, kindest people I've ever met. It sounds cliche, but there's just no better way to put it. Intrepid once again hits it out the ballpark with another great tour. With packages to fit your budget and interests, I have no doubt that I'll be using them again in combination with my solo travels. This particular tour was called the Best of Turkey, which I'll leave in the description. Or was the man overloaded with information and enthusiasm? <laughs> Turkey has so much history that often it was difficult to retain. If you're interested in Roman, Persian, Byzantine, German, Greek, and Ottoman eras, then Turkey is the place for you. And unless you're some sort of history wizard, having a guide would be very beneficial. I loved our group. Though small, it was a nice blend of various ages, locations, and of people living completely different lives. Cheers! But we all got to bond with an intimate experience during a time when not many people were visiting. And for me, that was probably the best outcome. I've been wanting to visit Turkey for so long, and it was well worth the wait. Thank you, Ur, and to the group. I'm so glad I got to have this adventure with you. That's about all I have to say for now. So, until the next one. This is Ur, an intrepid tour guide. No, this is uh, And I was a wonderful uh, Which one looked better? <laughs> yes. My <laughs> mistake. Adi You're late. You are cute, don't fall. Oh, look at your camera. Every travel. See you next videos. Bye bye. <laughs>